Welcome to the Commercial Gas Engineer channel. In this particular video, I'm going to talk about what I've been up to recently. So, I was carrying out work on this hovel and it was basically not coming on for servicing. How many times have you gone to sites and you're doing work and a service turns into a breakdown? I'm sure it happens to me at least once a week. So here I am just observing the flu, observing the outside as well. And they have terminal guards on them, which are good. Here's my ventilation in my plant room. I'm going to measure those later. My expansion vessel. I'm going to do a little tour of this plant room. Just have a little look around. So tracing the gas pipe. I'm currently filling the system up because when I got here, the pressure was low. I have to be careful because I'm not sure if there was a leak on site. So I don't want water to be spewing out at a different part of the building and being unaware. But site haven't told me anything about there being a leak as yet but i'm going to ask them later so it's the gas pipe the solenoid and the flu run just making sure it's clipped sometimes you've got to give things a wiggle because a clip can be there but it doesn't mean that the clip is actually doing anything and, and flus can dislodge but um belly um, and and come out and so on of their sockets so yeah, here's the bms panel it's good to get a picture of this before you walk in because sometimes you know you have to put things into hand and so you can't remember there's the system pressure going up this flu here i'm going to recommend that they get a clip for it must double check my notes actually um, to make sure that i have noted that i believe i have there's the fire alarms always keep an eye out for these when you are setting off smoke bombs or doing your flu gas analysis because it can go off whilst doing it if the, especially if it's too close to the boiler you saw the dosing part over there on the right underneath the pumps the different pumps that they have here and then the gauges there's an old fan i requested that they replace this one here they did because it was blowing the quick blow fuses always carry quick blow fuses with you here's their booster set and behind it got a dirt and air separator bring in a little notepad in the plot room if you can unless you've got photographic memory and you remember everything try to um, write everything down you see because you'll forget to put it in your report at times if you don't write it down as you see it and it's good sometimes to write before you start getting any tools out you can save yourself a lot of time if you walk around with a pen and just write what you see at first before you actually start doing any work sometimes you may find that you have to put your tools down from what you find and realize that work can't actually take place the site may have a major leak or there may be a major problem and you can investigate first so for instance this site told me that they have lost a phase that there's currently only two phases and i discovered that a bit later so here's the expansion vessel and the water coming out of the cold water storage tank so this particular body game wasted a lot of my time in one sense but if you take it as a learning curve it's okay you're being paid to learn sometimes especially if you're working on a boiler and it's not operating you can feel that you've lost your time but this particular boiler i changed the fan so i i had a bit of a a duty of care for this particular boiler because in a previous video you may have seen me diagnose that the quick blow fuses were blowing due to the fan motor being at full and this condensate trap is getting cleaned up because the boiler is locking out i'm doing the very basics of checking the condensate trap also the gas going to the unit look at the gunk in this making sure the gas valve opens up especially when it comes with a lockout code so putting this all back together and i'm gonna have to get some water back in the trap it's always good to look for a source of where you can get water from when you come into the plant room so always when that you get shown to site ox site where's the toilet where can i get water if i need to like a drink of water where's the fire panel sometimes it's good to know don't always ask but have a little look when you walk in i'm looking here to see if i can get water but it's, there's a tap connector here so i'm gonna need a washer for that so i may not bother with that i'm gonna find another place I ask a few questions first, the telephone number of the person on site. So the, the, the contact who you need, it's good to have their number because they may go missing for a long time and it can be hard to find them. So get their number if possible. I was looking to put that on my service sheet. So here I'm going to get some water here. Just was going to put on this sheet, basically telephone number, the site facilities for getting water and so on, drinking water. Okay, so um, I've put the condensate trap back in now. And I am just looking at the probes. So I'm going to have, there's a little slot here on the side, which is good for getting the probes out. So I'm going to clean them up. 
Let's have a look here. The gap's a bit close. We're going to clean it up. Ideally, I'd have liked to have new probes, but I don't. So I cleaned them up, and they're a bit clean. I didn't want to go too much, too far on them because the problem is I don't have spare. So I've got that back in now, and now I'm going to check to see if the gas valve is opening fully. So here's the fault code E09. So it's currently allowing me to reset it. I believe it's a hovel top gas 60. Just watch out for leaving things around like your charger in the plant room or putting tools in different places. Aim to keep all your tools in one area so that you don't forget them and do a little walk around at the end to make sure you've not forgotten anything. So I'm getting this boiler on. So I'm gonna turn it on on the panel into hand. So it's in hand now and I'm gonna create a demand. I'm going to put the boiler in service mode. So this is our standing pressure of 24. This is before anything is working, before any gas is being drawn. What the boiler started to do, it was lighting for a moment and cutting out. It's almost like there was no flame recognition. It's like it was lighting, but it wasn't sensing that there was a flame. So it kept attempting. You could see it going from 24 to 21 or so to 22, and it was as though there was no recognition. So now I've closed, you see the gas valve open in there. So the gas valve's opening and there's a spark. So it goes to E09, it has three attempts and it locks out. So the gas valve I know is opening. I'm going to open that back up. So this took a little while. I think more than an hour went by and it started to get a bit frustrated. And then later the boiler just decided that it wasn't going to attempt to light anymore. So I moved on to the boiler on the right. And I wanted to see how the gas valve was opening, how quick and what was happening. I wanted to get a chance to get my spark tester on the boiler on the left, but it gave up attempting to light. So I had to call it a day on the boiler on the left. So new PCB, um, service kit to clean out the chamber and then also and uh, change the probes. But I think the, the site were asking me to just quote for a new boiler because the, the boiler is more than 10 years old. And they didn't want to spend any more time or money on the unit. Just going to listen to high fire. Yep, they just weren't interested in spending any more time or money on the boiler. So I'm going to quote for the part. And then I'm also going to give them the option of replacing the whole unit. Okay, until next time. Bye-bye-bye.